All right, in this video, we're going to talk about just the basic idea of what it means for a function to be increasing and decreasing and what a local maximum and a local minimum is. <clears throat> Note, um, just for reference, sometimes they're also referred to as relative maximums and relative minimums. So if I switch back and forth talking about local maximums and relative maximums or local minimums and relative minimums, it means exactly the same thing. <clears throat> So all it means um, for a function to be increasing, so here's my graph, the solid line, and sorry I'm not a, not a great artiste. Notice as you move left to right, my function is getting, well, it's getting smaller. The y values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And suppose it just keeps going off bigger to the left. What we would say is on the interval from negative infinity to negative 3, the function is decreasing. Well, notice from negative 3, it's getting bigger, 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 up to 1. And suppose that this little part is a flat line. So from negative 3 to positive 1, we would say the function is increasing. Well, from 1 to 5, if this is a flat line, the function's remaining constant. Well, now it starts decreasing. So again, from on the interval 5 to 6, it's decreasing. Well, it's getting bigger from the x-coordinates of 6 and 7. So between 6 and 7, it is increasing. And then from 7 to infinity, this function is just going to keep decreasing. So that's all we mean when we say where is it increasing and where is it decreasing. The next thing to talk about are local maximums and local minimums. <clears throat> And when I think about local maximums and local minimums, I kind of imagine I'm looking at like a, a you know, a, off in the horizon, and maybe this is a little mountain range that I'm looking at my graph. Local minimums are going to be basically bottoms of valleys, and local maximums are going to be tops of hills. So there's a technical definition that says a local minimum, it says if you look at anything around it, if you think about this as being a height, it says if you move to the left or you move to the right, it says this height has to be less than or equal to the other heights around it. And notice the equal to part. That's going to be important. Likewise, you're going to have a local maximum if that height is greater than or equal to sort of what's around it. As, as, as you move immediately to the left, you start going down the hill. As you start moving immediately to the right, you're going down the hill. This would be considered a local maximum. So let's go through and label things. Well, point A, this is certainly a height that's less than or equal to the heights around it. So point A would be a local minimum. Well, if we look at point F, well, Notice it's not strictly less than or equal to the heights around it or strictly greater than or equal to the heights that are near it. It's bigger than the heights on one side but smaller than the others. F would be neither. It's not a local maximum nor is it a local minimum. Point B would be a local maximum because it's greater than or equal to the heights to the left. And if this is a flat line, it's greater than or equal to the heights to the right. So point B would be a local maximum. Point C, okay, this is where that greater than or equal to kicks in. If this is a horizontal line, this height is greater than or equal to the heights that are near it. So that makes it a local max. But by that same idea, it's also less than or equal to the heights that are around it. So it's also a considered a local minimum. So a point can actually be both. okay. And if we look over here at point D, again, this is kind of a bottom of a valley. Point D would be a local minimum. And point E would be a local maximum. So that's what we mean when we talk about local maximums and local minimums. And again, there's a technical definition. Um, I'm sure you can look in your book and find it. But that's the basic intuition. The way that we go about finding local maximums and local minimums, we're going to discuss in another video. And the main way is you look at the first derivative. So 
feel free to visit my website justmathtutoring.com and you can easily find the video for that um, it should have the title something to do with first derivatives using the first derivative to find local maximums and local minimums intervals of increase and decrease